and I um, I would just desperately looking to think that she might be standing outside the car, you know, alongside the road, and I um, I thought that's just ridiculous. So I I um, stopped myself, and I thought, what the heck really has happened to to me? And I I found out um, that these sort of symptoms that I had after her death and during her death is, is very normal for people who have near-death experiences or something called a shared death experience or empathic death. So I did my research uh, from January 2nd this year um, and, and took about six months researching this and then wrote, wrote the story. Because you spoke to uh, a couple of um, doctors and professors who have been researching into this kind of thing for for quite a while. A chap called uh, Dr. Pin Van Lommel, who's known for conducting the world's last prospective study of near-death experiences. What what, what did he have to say then? Um, He had to say that these things are very real and that, you know, he he was a skeptic himself and didn't didn't really believe in an afterlife or or any, any kind of... I don't know what, it, what you want to call it, but he didn't believe that the, the spirit continued. He was a very, very rooted in science type guy. But he, um, he did this massive study on people who had cardiac arrest and saw the light, if you will. And, and he's been convinced because he followed these people up for the next um, 10 years. He, he got back to them a couple times during those 10 years and checked to see what happened to their life. And always, not only the event itself, which, which happened, by the way, while they were actually technically dead, because a cardiac arrest means your heart is stopped, there's no blood flow to the brain, there should not be the possibility of memories. So these people who have these very vivid experiences who are technically dead, their lives just got turned upside down, they changed their beliefs, they, they uh, oftentimes changed employment and jobs, they did things much, with much more compassion and so he found that the after effects of the event was almost more telling than the event itself. But he told me that he felt that the consciousness resides outside of our brain and that the brain is like, like a receiver, like a television set, and that your consciousness, who you really are, is actually outside of, of the brain. It's, it's more kind of out there in the ether or whatever, and that he believes that people, especially when they're about ready to pass, that their consciousness is able to go wherever their thought goes. So he believes my mother connected with me on purpose to get to get to me before she died. Mm. Um, but in doing that, I somehow, if you will, passed over with her. In even if I just touched my toe into the other side of, of the of um, other dimension, the afterlife, and that then was then the trigger to change my you know my life, my psychic abilities, my some physical changes, the way I think all sorts of after effects that are um, pivotal and classic in a near-death experience person. I had almost every one of the 20 or 30 after effects that somebody who dies has. Mm. So, so he, was, he was great. He said she came and got me. He said I was with her when she died. Yeah. So do you think that happened to you on, on purpose then? I mean... Um, the, the fact that um, you were able to experience that and it has changed your life, um, that was supposed to happen then? Yeah, I think she wanted... My mom had a really good faith, and I, I didn't have a faith. I rejected um, all sorts of belief in, um, you know, things greater than me a long time ago, and I think that she didn't want her youngest daughter to, to not have a faith, and I think she made... She purposely connected with me. Whether or not that's, you know... A divine plan I don't know but I know that she she wanted to be with me and you know maybe that was um, circumstantial that it happened but maybe she actually purposely did it because she went wow there is something out here she was kind of dabbling with the other side herself but it's you know it's a massive it made a massive impact on me I, I no longer fear fear death I now believe there is something greater than us which I hadn't before and I am um, you know, I'm just I'm just a different person. Actually, I'm a much um, happier person because of what happened. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? So how 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 has it changed your belief system then? What what do you feel about things now that you didn't before? Well, the the main thing is is I I didn't believe there was an afterlife um, at all. I I thought when you died, you went in the ground and worms ate your body and your brain, and it was kind of a dark, dank, terrible thing to happen. And that you know, once you died, you're just gone. 
But now I believe that our consciousness or our, our soul or our spirit, however you want to call it, I believe that life continues, that we continue, albeit without a body. And I know that love continues um, because she came back and visited me. <laughs> and I know it sounds very strange, but, you know, I've got witnesses. <laughs> so she left evidence for us. She brought things to my house. She touched me. She did all that. So she's changed Oh, tell me, tell me what happened with that then. Tell me, explain the visit, if you can. Yeah, well, the first thing that happened was um, after she died, I was really distraught and unable to stop crying, which was quite interesting because I didn't expect to be so, uh, so traumatized by it. My husband stayed home from work because he worked in Germany and traveled uh, Monday through Friday. And uh, he stayed home for, with me for three, four days on compassionate leave. And then when he had to go back to work, I still was crying all the time, even in my sleep. And she came back and, and started stroking my hair like she used to do when I was a child. Of course, you know, it sounds really great, but I was petrified because, you know, I, I, I live alone. I lived alone midweek, and I thought somebody had entered the house and was there to attack me. Oh, no. But, yeah, so at first I was, you know, you know, trying to fight back, and then I, re I turned the light on. There was nobody in the room, and... Every time I'd start to cry again, I'd feel this petting on my head, and then I realized it was her because that's what she did when I was a child, when I was upset. She would pet me until I would calm. So she did this night after night while my husband was gone, and then when he came back, she, she didn't do it. And so it got really strange. I was thinking, you know, something's wrong with me, <laughs> but, um, it, but it wasn't. So then I denied that and thought, okay, I was just grieving. You know, she didn't touch me. This can't happen, la, la, la as you would, and then um, as soon as I started denying it, then she started leaving um, hair grips, we call them bobby pins in the U.S., she started leaving these black hair grips around the house, and um, the first one showed up exactly where I was when I had started gagging when she was dying, and then she left one by the coffee machine, and she would leave these things, and my husband and I were finding them, and so we'd know they weren't there, and then in the morning we'd wake up, and there they would be, just sitting there on our worktop or something. Wow. Yeah, so that's why, I mean, I had evidence. I mean, I still have this thing, that she, these bobby pins. And um, so she, she did stuff to say, to make it so I couldn't keep denying that she was still there. Yeah. Uh, it's just fabulous. Oh, fantastic. So how, how has it been writing the book? Has it been, been quite cathartic? Oh, extremely cathartic. And I, I set my own intention as I was doing it. I was wondering, why am I doing it? And I, I realized it was to honor my mother. Uh, it was also to help me heal through her loss, but also to help others who maybe have lost somebody or, you know, to help them understand if they've had a weird experience like I have, that it's actually okay and it's normal and you're not going crazy. So, yeah, it's been very cathartic and very... Um, it's an interesting book because I've revealed my past and I've talked about all these things that happened with my mom, which, you know, you wouldn't normally tell just the average person. So I've, I've tried to show and share what really happened so that people who've had odd things might say okay there's somebody else out there who's had this happen too i'm not i'm not um you know a little bit you know need to go with the guys in the white coats or anything <laughs> yeah it makes a difference doesn't it with with these kind of things to not feel that you're you're on the, on your own and the only person that it's happened to yeah and it's great because the scientists all the scientists i spoke to and the professors who've been researching it for 20 30 years some of them 40 years they 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 just were surprised that I you know because I didn't die and have a near death experience that I had the same symptoms but they're telling me that everything that I experienced is normal which didn't feel normal at the time but apparently it's normal once you're kind of opened up to that perception yeah so it's a really different way of looking at things because we're blinkered really until we have these exposures and then we're able to see a broader life out there yeah. It's fascinating stuff. If people want to get a copy of the book, it's called Beyond Goodbye. It's by Annie Cap. You can have a look at Annie's website as well, anniecap.com, for more information. Annie, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much.